Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be covering three antioxidant serums from The Ordinary that I think are good and I think are perhaps worth considering incorporating into your skincare routine if you haven't already incorporated some type of antioxidant-based product. Why? Well, antioxidants, when applied to the skin, they may help in reducing oxidative stress that is generated upon exposure to environmental stressors like ultraviolet radiation from the sun, pollution, tobacco smoke, Sunscreen blocks out, protects the skin from ultraviolet radiation, but it can't protect it 100% and free radicals are still generated. So the idea of using an antioxidant based product will help in mitigating some of those damaging free radicals. There are a ton of them out there, but you guys, you don't have to spend a lot of money to incorporate an antioxidant into your skincare routine. And of course, The Ordinary is known for being affordable and kind of no nonsense using evidence-based ingredients in their formulations. And they have a ton of products, but these are my top three picks for antioxidant serums. Now, to, to make it clear, you don't need to use all of these products. You, you might just want to choose one. Serum number one that honestly I don't think gets hyped up enough is their Caffeine Solution 5% plus EGCG. You're kind of getting a two for one here. You're getting two antioxidants. You're getting caffeine. Now caffeine, not only is it an antioxidant, but it's an anti-inflammatory as well. And that's helpful not only for reducing the burden of oxidative stress that contributes to wrinkles, fine lines, and skin cancer risk, but it's also helpful for improving the appearance of dark spots, hyperpigmentation, and reducing the chances that you will develop hyperpigmentation. Um, a lot of what leads to abnormal hyperpigmentation is inflammatory mediators, things like cytokines, they stimulate the skin cells, the melanocytes, the cells that make pigment, they stimulate that. Uh, to, to make pigment, and that is part of what leads to hyperpigmentation. Now, caffeine also has been shown to be helpful in uh, improving the appearance of cellulite, and whether or not that has to do with kind of a vasoconstrictive effect, it's hard to say for sure. So you might entertain actually the idea of this product, massaging it to areas of the body where you have cellulite it may improve the appearance of it. Don't expect miracles. Cellulite is, is very difficult to improve the appearance of, but there is some data for topical caffeine for improving the look of cellulite. Topical caffeine also has been shown to be helpful for reducing redness, and it's also helpful for improving the appearance of dark under eye circles. When it comes to dark under eye circles, this is another one of those things like cellulite. Don't expect miracles. More often than not, the dark under eye circles are hereditary, and I don't want you to get you know, your hopes up too high, but topical ca caffeine, um, to, to the lower eyelid area, for example, may help in improving the appearance of dark under eye circles. And caffeine has also been shown to be helpful for androgenetic alopecia. I have a recent video reviewing that Vegamore product. You'll recall that product does have caffeine in it. Caffeine has been shown when applied to the scalp to improve uh, hair density and hair thickness in individuals who have pattern hair loss, both men and women. You don't have to worry, however, that caffeine is going to cause hair, unwanted hair growth from applying it to the skin. It really just reduces inflammation. And when it comes to androgenetic alopecia, that's probably a key way in which it works. Um, but do know that there is data for caffeine in regrowing hair. Now, The Ordinary has a hair product that has caffeine in it. I would suggest using that instead of this if you're motivated to, to try a hair a caffeine-based hair product. Uh, it seems pretty affordable and relatively straightforward. But for the face, uh, if you wanna employ caffeine, this is a great product, affordable. And then let's talk about the EGCG. That is a golden child. Epigallocatechan gallate is a potent polyphenol from green tea with anti-cancer uh, properties. And it also has been shown actually to improve the appearance of pores and minimize oiliness. Probably how it works to minimize the appearance of pores is through its anti-inflammatory effects and in reducing oxidative stress because that actually can impact your oils and lead to more inflammation in the skin, more kind of prominent appearing pores and, and what have you. So merely through the anti-inflammatory effect, it probably helps put the brakes a little bit on excessively oily skin. So this product is great, not only for going down the path of 
reducing the overall burden of free radical damage that occurs just from day-to-day -day environmental stressors, but also perhaps for reducing redness and irritation through its anti-inflammatory effects. The way to use this product is to just use a few drops, apply it to clean skin, ideally in the morning. That is the best time actually to use an antioxidant product. So you want it on board first thing in the morning, apply it to the skin, and then 100% you have to put sunscreen on over it and uh, wear sun protective clothing because if you don't have the sun protection on board, it's, you know, it's going to degrade the antioxidants, the UV exposure, and, you know, it, it, you'll, you'll be taking numerous steps back. But together, the combination of sun protection and an antioxidant serum underneath really gives you good broad spectrum, quite literally, protection against not only the ultraviolet radiation issues, which sunscreen helps block out, but also some of the other inflammatory things that we encounter throughout the day, like pollution can really drive a lot of um, inflammatory processes in the skin that lead to not only hyperpigmentation, but more problematic acne and the visible signs of aging. All right, product number two goes by the name of EUK-134. Now this product is interesting. It's actually a mimetic of something called superoxide dismutase, an enzyme in the skin that helps in converting uh, damaging free radicals to oxygen and water. And it is present naturally in our skin, but with age and with exposure to environmental stressors, levels of that enzyme decline. And so there is evidence that applying it topically to the skin can really help quite a bit in reducing the burden of oxidative stress. Now this particular mimetic, this particular compound, EUK-134, to be clear, this is a proprietary Estee Lauder compound. Um, and their data, which you always have to take with a grain of salt because it is an industry-based study, their data show that there is a reduction in oxidative stress and that this compound pr protects cells from, from damage from environmental exposures. Now, the non-Estee Lauder data on other types of topical superoxide dismutase, not this particular compound, but other mimetics, do in fact show that it is helpful actually for um, something called post-radiation fibrosis. People who undergo radiation therapy for different types of cancer, like breast cancer, for example, the skin in that area can suffer quite a bit. And uh, a lot of oxidative stress is generated in the skin that can contribute to thickening, fibrosis, and rashes and certain skin problems. There is some evidence that applying superoxide dismutase mimetics topically can help reduce that overall. So there's some data to support that this in fact is a, a viable way to reduce oxidative stress in the skin. Uh, now, you know, it's interesting. I believe this is newer from The Ordinary. I don't think that they always have this product. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it is, it is a Estee Lauder compound. So you will find it in a lot of Estee Lauder products. Like I think they have a SPF 30 face cream with this in it. It's not unique to The Ordinary by any means. And if you didn't know, The Ordinary is now owned by Estee Lauder. Anyways, how do you use this? Again, um, I recommend applying it to the skin first thing in the morning and then putting sunscreen on over it. Now this product, uh, the, uh, they stipulate actually that you don't wanna use it alongside any acids. Uh, so if you like to use a vitamin C serum in the morning, you might wanna be careful. I don't believe that you could use it alongside this. Most vitamin C serums, at least the reputable ones, like the CE Ferulic, they're gonna have ferulic acid in them to stabilize the L-ascorbic acid. And so that's not gonna play well with this EUK-134. I suppose it's, you know, stability issue or something like that. Also, if you use an alpha hydroxy acid or beta hydroxy acid product in the morning, then you would wanna skip this. All right, and then the third and final serum is their resveratrol 3% plus ferulic acid 3%. This is another two for, you get two antioxidants. You get resveratrol, which is a polyphenol present in like grape skin. Applied to the skin, it has been shown actually, it's actually very, pretty evidence-based. Uh, it's kind of one of these, again, kind of like the caffeine solution, unsung heroes. Resveratrol is a particularly good antioxidant for people who suffer from issues related to hyperpigmentation, sunspots, because it is both a direct and indirect inhibitor of tyrosinase, the enzyme 
uh, that is responsible for pigment production. So it not only directly inhibits that enzyme, but it indirectly inhibits it by reducing expression levels of it. Resveratrol is also anti-inflammatory. Again, for those of you dealing with hyperpigmentation specifically, that's going to help reduce signals that push, uh, that stimulate melanocytes to make pigment. And for those of you who deal with redness and irritation, that's obviously going to be beneficial as well. Now, uh, the other cool thing about resveratrol is that when it's applied to the skin, it actually can indirectly stimulate something called the NRF2 pathway. I talked about this in my video on the ketogenic diet for skin. I mentioned in that video that uh, you know the ketogenic diet may increase NRF2. Uh, which is an anti-inflammatory pathway. I also mentioned in that video that you can stimulate that by eating broccoli as well. Uh, anyways, uh, topical resveratrol has been shown to, to stimulate that. So you're kind of getting, uh, not only does it, you know, fight off free radical di damage directly by being an antioxidant, but it also kind of helps boost up your body's own antioxidant pathways. And then you also have ferulic acid. Now ferulic acid is an antioxidant naturally present in plants. It's actually in plant cell walls. And it is wonderful for reducing the burden of oxidative stress from the sun. It actually, believe it or not, has sunscreen properties because it has this large ring-like structure. It can absorb UVB rays. And so it has natural sunscreen properties. To be crystal clear, it is not a substitute for sunscreen. You couldn't just put ferulic acid on and be like, okay, cool, I've got sunblock. But it really does enhance the benefit of wearing sunscreen to pair it with a ferulic acid-based antioxidant serum because you get a little bit of UV absorption from the ferulic acid, plus the ferulic acid scavenges free radicals reduces inflammation. I mentioned that people with hyperpigmentation can benefit from incorporating this resveratrol into their skincare routine. Uh, people with melasma, listen up, uh, resveratrol has actually been shown uh, when applied to the skin to benefit people with melasma, perhaps because of its either anti-inflammatory properties and or the tyrosinase inhibiting properties, probably both. Resveratrol overall is very well tolerated, but ferulic acid, unfortunately, can be irritating. And 3% is high, a pretty high percentage of ferulic acid. So I strongly encourage you, if you're going to try this product, definitely do a test spot first, especially if you have melasma, because anything that causes irritation, even if it's original intent was to reduce irritation, anything, any product that is irritating to you can definitely worsen melasma. So for sure, do a test spot with this before you know putting it all over your face. But like the other three, the other two antioxidant serums, this would yet again be another one that you put on first thing in the morning to your skin, allow it to absorb fully, and then apply, then apply your sunscreen on over it. Now, because this product has ferulic acid, this would be another one that would be contraindicated to pair with the EUK-134. Uh, so be, be aware of that. The EUK-134, you don't want to use anything that has an, an acid in it. Uh, acidic products can mess up the EUK-134, the, the superoxide dismutase mimetic. I would say just choose one of these. See how you tolerate it. Incorporate it into your routine slowly, of course, doing a test spot first. Um, and try using it first thing in the morning. You can use it actually up to twice a day. Remember from some of my other videos that at nighttime, free radicals continue to be generated from environmental stressors that we are exposed to throughout the day. So having some antioxidants on board at nighttime can be beneficial. With the caveat that some of these products, namely the EUK-134, don't pair well with uh, acidic-based products. So if you use an acid that you leave on overnight, you know that would be that would be an, one that you wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to do the EUK at night with them. Um, but overall, I think these three are honestly, in my opinion, from the ordinary, the best. Now they've got some other antioxidant products that are not necessarily bad, but I just don't think are like all that. Uh, for example, they have a pycnogenol serum. Now pycnogenol is another antioxidant. Applied topically to the skin, there's really not a lot of data for it as, an, as a topical antioxidant. Um, the most data that we have with it is actually consuming it orally in supplement form. It has been shown to improve skin elasticity, age spots, 
and another study that shows that oral pycnogenol can help with melasma. But putting it on the skin, uh, I really don't have much in the way of data on that. Now, they also have a niacinamide serum. You guys know I'm a huge fan of niacinamide. It is a wonderful antioxidant for reducing the burden of free radical damage, but they use 10% uh, niacinamide in their serum, which is pretty high, and unfortunately, at that strength, is more often likely to cause irritation. Stick to 5%. Um, or lower in your niacinamide serums, but that product, it it's, doesn't cause irritation for you. It would otherwise be a fine one as well. Now, I'm not gonna cover their vitamin C serums. They have a variety of them. I'm gonna save that for another video. I'll review their vitamin C stuff in a future video. Uh, but suffice it to say, these three that I mentioned here, I think are some of their best if you're interested in incorporating an antioxidant into your skincare routine. I Another reason I choose these products from The Ordinary is that the ingredients are pretty stable and there is evidence that they get into the skin and fight off free radical damage. When it comes to antioxidants, that is always the question mark. Is it stable enough in the product? Does it actually get into the skin and fight off free radical damage and do these things that we're hoping it does? One of the reasons why I always dance around vitamin C serums is you guys know that Vitamin C is very difficult to formulate properly so that it's stable, it gets into the skin, and it actually helps long term. Um, so that's why I'm going to cover their vitamin C serums and vitamin C products in a separate video. But, uh, you know, suffice it to say, incorporating a topical antioxidant in your skincare routine can help reduce the burden of oxidative stress that contributes to hyperpigmentation and the visible signs of photoaging and also flares of acne and rosacea and other inflammatory skin conditions. So comment below and if you guys have used any of these products, do you find them beneficial? I love the caffeine solution. I know I've raved about that. Um, and the resveratrol is also very, I mean, all three of these are good. That's why I picked them. Uh, but let me know your experience with them. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.